The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Miss Ethel Barrymore in a dramatic narration of the passion and death. Miss Barrymore will be introduced by tonight's host, Guy Madison. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The passion and death is a love story. A true story. It recounts events in the lives of men and women who lived many years ago. But the events of their lives are as real today as if they happened only yesterday. These events give meaning to the sufferings in life. Give meaning to sacrifice in our lives. Because they are an inspiration to lift our sorrows and crosses out of the hopelessness and despair you hear so much about today. Yes, only love gives meaning to sacrifice. For centuries, this story has inspired men and women in all parts of the world to give themselves generously and unselfishly in service to their fellow men and in charity to all. We present Miss Ethel Barrymore in a dramatic narration of the greatest love story the world has known, the story of God's love for men. festival day of the past, Jesus knowing that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Then there were gathered together the chief priests and ancients of the people in the court of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they said among themselves, but this man doth many miracles. Yes, they speak of one four days in the grave whom he has raised to life. For three years now, he's gone throughout the towns and villages of Palestine, healing and helping the sick, speaking his message of brotherhood. And... Do you not see that we prevail nothing? Behold, the whole world has gone after him. Then we must apprehend him. No, no, not on the festival days, lest there be a tumult among the people. We must apprehend him and put him to death, for it is better that one man die for the people so that a whole nation will not perish. And the chief priests and Pharisees gave commandment that if any man knew where he was, he should tell them that they might apprehend him. Then came one of the twelve apostles, who was called Judas Iscariot, to the chief priests and magistrates. And he went in and discoursed with them, saying... What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? You? You will deliver him? Are you not one of his disciples? What will you give me? Silver? Yes. Then we will give you 30 pieces of silver. Having given his promise, Judas from henceforth sought opportunity to pray Jesus in the absence of the multitude. Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus gathered his disciples to eat the past. And while they were at supper, he took bread and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples and said, Take ye and eat, this is my body. And taking the chalice, he gave thanks and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto the remission of sins. And when supper was done, he riseth and layeth aside his garments, having taken a towel, girded himself, 
After that, he putteth water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then after he had taken his garments being set down, he spoke to them, Know you what I have done? You call me Lord and Master, and you say, Well, for so I am. If then I, being your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, I have given you an example that as I have done to you, so you do also. For the servant is not greater than the master, nor the disciple greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, you shall be blessed if you do them. Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you that eateth with me shall betray me. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Peter therefore beckoned to him and said, Who is it of whom he speaketh? Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall reach bread dipped. And when he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. And after the morsel, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, That which thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew to what purpose he said this unto him. For some thought, because Judas had the purse, that Jesus meant he should buy these things needed for festival days or that he should give something to the poor. He therefore, having received the morsel, went out immediately, and it was night. When Judas therefore was gone out, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than this no man hath that a man lay down his life for his friends. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Ask, and ye shall receive. You have heard that I said to you, I go away, but I will come again unto you. Now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it shall come to pass, you may believe. Arise, let us go hence. They therefore went forth to the Mount of Olives, over the brook Sidron, to a place which is called Gethsemane. And when they had come into the garden, Jesus said to them, All you shall be scandalized in me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep shall be dispersed. But after I shall be risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Now sit you here while I go yonder and pray. He taketh Peter and James and John with him, and he began to grow sad and said to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch. Pray lest ye enter into temptation. And when he was gone forward a little, he fell flat on the ground and prayed. And Peter and James and John spoke among themselves. Peter? Yes. He speaks of our being scandalized and scattered. Though everyone be scandalized in him, I will never be scandalized. I will never leave him. You will not deny him, Peter? No. Though I should die together with him, I will not deny him. But he said this night before the cock crows, thou shalt deny him thrice. I am ready to go with him both into prison and to death. Peter, look. He is in an agony. We will go to him. No, it is better not. 
He asked us to stay here and watch. Listen. He is praying to his father. Father, all things are possible to thee. If thou wilt remove this chalice from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And being in an agony, he prayed the longer, and his sweat became as drops of blood trickling down upon the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to the disciples, he found them sleeping. And he said to them, Why sleep you? Could you not watch one hour with me? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners. And while he was still speaking came Judas, who knew the place, because Jesus had gone there often together with his disciples to pray. And with him came a multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the ancients. But how shall we know him? They are grouped together in the dark. Which one is he, Judas? I shall go up to them. Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he. Hold him fast and lead him away carefully. Hail, Rabbi. Judas. Dost thou betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and held him. And Peter, having a sword, stretching forth his hand, drew it and striking the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put up thy sword into its place, for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot ask my father, and he will give me presently more than twelve legions of angels? For this is done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And now you come out as if it were against a thief with swords and clubs. When I was daily with you in the temple, you did not stretch forth your hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then the disciples leaving him fled, but Peter and another disciple watched from afar off, and the band and the tribune and the servants took Jesus and bound him, and they led him away. And they brought Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and ancients were assembled together. When therefore they had gone in to where they sat in judgment, they questioned him. What witnesses bring you against this man? He has called himself the king of the Jews. Yes. We know that in secret he is perverting the nation to set up a new kingdom. That is true, because he has refused to pay tribute or to visit the temple. He said that he will destroy the temple of God, and after three days, rebuild it. <laughs> Answerest thou nothing to the things that are charged against thee? You see, he cannot answer. He is guilty. He called himself a prophet. Blindfold him and let him prophesy who struck him. Bah! If he were a prophet, he would know who it is. Is this the promised one, the Redeemer, the Christ who is to deliver his people? <laughs> As high priest, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us if thou be the Christ, the Son of God. I am, and thou shalt see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God and coming with the clouds of heaven. What need we of further witnesses? For we have heard the blasphemy from his own lips. What think you? He is guilty of death. Let him be crucified. Away with him. And they led Jesus outside to the court of the high priest, where Peter had entered, that he might see what would happen. And Peter sat with the servants at a fire, warming himself. And one of the maid servants, seeing him in the light, began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. You, are you not also with Jesus of Nazareth? Me? I neither know nor understand what thou sayest. Surely thou art one of his disciples. Did I not see thee in the garden with him? By all that is holy, I am not. 
I do not even know him. Of a truth, thou art a follower of his. For even thy speech doth discover thee as a Galilean. Have I not said I know not the man of whom you speak? Must I swear by oath? And Jesus turned and looked on Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord as he had said, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And going out, Peter wept bitterly. And when morning was come, the chief priests and ancients of the people who took counsel against Jesus that they might put him to death. And having bound him, they led him away from Caiaphas to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, seeing that he was condemned, repented and went back to the chief priests and ancients. Judas? I would speak with you concerning Jesus. It is finished. He is condemned to death. But this man hath done no evil. He has been judged guilty. I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. You have sinned, Judas? Then look you to it. What is that to us? I will return the money. It is not lawful for us to take it, because it is the price of blood. I have betrayed him. Here! He is become as a madman. This money... It shall be used for the purchase of a burying place for strangers. And with the money they bought the potter's field that is called the field of blood even to this day. Then was fulfilled the word spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was prized, and they gave them unto the potter's field. And when Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, the scribes and ancients went not into the hall. They might not be defiled on the festival days. Pilate therefore went out and spoke to them, saying, What accusation bring you against this man? If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him to you. He is guilty of death. Why? What evil has he done? We have found him perverting our nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Dost thou hear the accusations they bring against thee? Answereth thou nothing? He stirreth up all the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee even to this place. He says that he is Christ. The king of the Jews. Art thou the king of the Jews? Art thou a king? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. For this was I born, for this came I into the world, that I should give testimony of the truth. And having questioned Jesus, Pilate spoke again to the Jews. I find no cause of guilt in this man. I will chastise him, therefore, and let him go. He has been judged guilty. But you have a custom that I should release one unto you at the Pasch. Do you not wish, therefore, that I release unto you the king of the Jews? We have no king but Caesar. Crucify him. Shall I release Jesus or Barabbas? Who is a judge, thief, and murderer? Release Barabbas! This man is blasphemy! He calls himself the son of God! He's destroying the temple! Crucify him! Why? What evil hath he done? I find no cause of death in him. I will chastise him, therefore, and let him go. No. Then, therefore, Pilate took Jesus and delivered him to the soldiers. They led him away into the court of the palace and called together the whole band. And stripping him, they scourged him and clothed him with a scarlet cloak and plaited a crown of thorns. They put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And bowing the knee before him, they mocked him and spitting upon him, took the reed and struck his head. And when the hour was come, Jesus went forth bearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. Pilate therefore went forth again and spoke to the ancients. I bring him forth unto you, that you may see I find no cause in him. 
Behold the man. Let him be crucified. Take him, you, and crucify him. I find no cause of death in him. We have a law, and according to the law, he should die, because he made himself the son of God. Pilot, your wife wishes to speak with you. Yes? Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Let him be crucified. If thou release this man, thou art not Caesar's friend. For whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Bring me a basin of water. I shall wash my hands of this deed before the people. I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look you to it. His blood be upon us and upon our children. We'll take his blood. Then therefore Pilate delivered him to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus, and bearing his own cross, he went forth. And there followed after him a great multitude of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. And Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. And there were also two malefactors led with him to be put to death. When therefore they came to the place which is called Golgotha, which is the place of Calvary, they gave him wine mingled with myrrh, but he took it not. And it was the third hour, and with the robbers, one on his right hand and the other on his left, they crucified him. And Jesus said, Father... Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Ah, thou that destroyest the temple of God and in three days buildest it up again, save thyself. He saves others. Himself he cannot save. Let him come down from the cross that we may see and believe. See the inscription above his cross. Yes. So this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. See, the thieves on the crosses, they are talking to him. If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. That is enough. Neither dost thou fear God, seeing thou art under the same condemnation. And we indeed, justly. But this man has done no evil. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore has seen his mother and the disciples standing whom he loved, he saith to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. After that he saith to the disciples, Son, behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. It was almost the sixth hour. The sun was clouded and there was darkness all over the earth. And Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Then with a loud voice he cried out, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And saying this, bowing his head, he yielded up the ghost. Behold, 
the veil of the temple was rent in two from top even to the bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were rent and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints that had slept arose and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection came into the holy city and appeared to many. Now his friends from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things, and all the multitude of them that were there came together to that site and saw the things that were done return, striking their breasts. But the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus, and having seen the earthquake and the things that were done, were sore afraid and said, Indeed, this man was the Son of God. And in the hearts of the disciples who had watched on the hill of Calvary, there echoed the words of Christ, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Little children, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Thank you, Miss Barrymore, for an inspiring performance. The Passion and Death is a fitting family theater program because it is a story of sacrifice, a lesson of love. Yes, and in a family, sacrifice and love go together. Every mother knows what it is to give up things for her children. Every father makes sacrifices for his wife and family. Keeping a family together and happy demands continual sacrifices. Sometimes the things you must do and the things you must do without are almost too much to bear. That's why a home needs God's help. That's why a family needs family prayer. Only when you pray together as a family do you know the wonderful help that comes through family prayer. If you've never turned to God before, turn to Him now. And this will indeed be a joyful and happy Easter for you and your family. Your family will be united together with God's love, with his help. In this realization, a family that prays together stays together. This is Guy Madison saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Miss Ethel Barrymore for her performance this evening and to Max Terror for his music. The script was prepared by Mark Carney. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Norman Field, Janet Scott, Victor Perrin, Edward Coleman's, Charles Maxwell, Herbert Rawlinson, Bob Purcell, and Howard Culver. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Gene Crane and Robert Walker in Little Boy Blue. Your host will be William Gargan. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.